My husband cheated and got his co-worker pregnant. Then he suggested we raise the baby together. I contacted the mistress and now he's lost everything. I, 32F, have been married to Jasper, 35M, for six years, but our story goes back much further. We met during our sophomore year of college at a mutual friend's party. I remember it vividly, I was wearing my favorite blue dress, and Jasper walked in with a confident smile that immediately caught my attention. We spent the entire night talking about everything from our childhood dreams to our favorite books. By the end of the night, I knew there was something special about him. Our relationship blossomed quickly. We'd spend hours studying together in the library, sneaking glances at each other over our textbooks. Jasper was majoring in finance while I was pursuing marketing. We'd often joke about how we'd make the perfect power couple in the business world someday. After graduation, we both landed entry-level jobs in the same city. It felt like fate was pushing us together. We decided to move in together, splitting the rent on a tiny one-bedroom apartment downtown. Those early days were magical, we'd come home from our jobs, exhausted but excited to see each other. We'd cook dinner together, well, Jasper would cook, and I'd attempt to help, talk about our days, and dream about our future. Two years into living together, Jasper proposed. It was a surprise weekend getaway to the beach where we had our first vacation together. He got down on one knee at sunset, sand sticking to his jeans, and asked me to spend the rest of my life with him. I said yes without hesitation. Our wedding was small but perfect. We exchanged vows in a quaint chapel, surrounded by our closest friends and family. I can still picture Jasper's face as I walked down the aisle, he looked at me like I was the only person in the world. The first few years of our marriage were wonderful. We both focused on our careers, supporting each other through late nights and stressful projects. Jasper quickly climbed the corporate ladder, becoming a senior financial analyst at a prestigious firm. I found my niche in digital marketing, eventually becoming a marketing manager for a tech startup. We had always agreed that we didn't want children. It was a decision we made early in our relationship and reaffirmed several times throughout our marriage. We enjoyed our freedom, the ability to travel on a whim, and the focus we could put into our careers and personal interests. We even joked about being the cool aunt and uncle to our friends' kids. About eight months ago, I started noticing changes in Jasper. It was subtle at first, he'd come home later than usual, citing work emergencies. He became more protective of his phone, always keeping it face down or in his pocket. When I'd ask about his day, his answers became vague and dismissive. I tried to brush it off, telling myself I was being paranoid. Jasper had always been honest with me, and I trusted him completely. But as the weeks went by, the distance between us grew. Our weekly date nights became less frequent, and when we did spend time together, Jasper seemed distracted and distant. One Friday evening, Jasper came home looking visibly upset. His tie was loosened, and his usually neatly combed hair was disheveled. I asked him what was wrong, and he broke down crying. What he told me next shattered my world. Jasper confessed that he had been having an affair with his co-worker, Melody, 28F, for the past six months. I felt like I had been punched in the stomach. The man I had trusted with my heart, the person I thought I knew better than anyone else, had betrayed me in the worst way possible. But that wasn't even the worst part. Jasper then revealed that Melody was three months pregnant with his child. I felt the room spin around me. Not only had Jasper cheated on me, but he had also gotten another woman pregnant, something we had both agreed we didn't want in our own marriage. I was furious and heartbroken. I told Jasper to leave and pack a bag. I couldn't bear to look at him. I called my best friend, Sabrina, 33F, in tears and asked if I could stay with her for a few days. Sabrina, bless her, didn't hesitate. She came to pick me up within the hour. The next few days were a blur. I alternated between crying, raging, and feeling completely numb. Sabrina was my rock, listening to me vent, bringing me comfort food, and assuring me that none of this was my fault. Meanwhile, Jasper kept calling and texting, begging for forgiveness and saying he'd end things with Melody. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I knew I needed time to process everything. After a week, I agreed to meet Jasper to talk things through. We met at a neutral location, a quiet cafe near our apartment. Jasper looked terrible, he had dark circles under his eyes and seemed to have lost weight. He started by apologizing profusely, saying the affair was a huge mistake and that he wanted to make things right. Then, to my utter disbelief, Jasper dropped another bombshell. He said he had been thinking about the situation and had come up with a solution. He proposed that we stay married, and once Melody had a baby, we would raise it together. He said Melody wasn't ready to be a mother and had agreed to let us adopt the child. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Jasper actually expected me to raise his love child with his mistress? I asked him if he was out of his mind. He tried to justify it by saying it would solve everything, 
he wouldn't have to leave me, and we could have a family like he always secretly wanted. This revelation hit me like a ton of bricks. Jasper had lied about not wanting children. All those conversations we had, all those times we reaffirmed our decision not to have kids, had they all been lies? I felt like I was looking at a stranger. I told Jasper absolutely not, and that I wanted a divorce. Jasper became desperate, saying he'd do anything to make it work. He even suggested that Melody could move in with us temporarily so we could all adjust to the situation. The audacity of his suggestion made me feel sick. At this point, I'd had enough. I stood up, told Jasper he was delusional, and left the cafe. On my way home, I couldn't stop thinking about Melody. Did she know about Jasper's insane plan? Did she really agree to give up her baby, or was Jasper manipulating her too? I decided Melody deserved to know the truth. I still had her contact information from a company holiday party last year. With shaking hands, I composed a long email, detailing everything Jasper had told me, including his plan for us to raise the baby together. Melody replied quickly, and her response confirmed my suspicions. She had no idea about Jasper's plan and never agreed to give up her baby. She was shocked and upset, saying Jasper had promised to leave me and start a new life with her and their child. When Jasper found out I had contacted Melody, he went ballistic. He showed up at Sabrina's apartment, pounding on the door and yelling that I had ruined everything. He accused me of trying to turn Melody against him and sabotaging any chance of reconciliation. Sabrina threatened to call the police, and Jasper finally left, but not before warning me that I'd regret this. I've blocked Jasper on everything and am still staying with Sabrina while I figure out my next steps. I'm meeting with a divorce lawyer next week to start the process. The life I thought I had, the future I had planned, it's all gone. I feel lost and betrayed but I know I can't stay with Jasper after everything that's happened. So, Reddit, I'd for telling Melody about Jasper's plan and potentially ruining any chance of reconciliation? I feel like I did the right thing, but Jasper's reaction has me second-guessing everything. Update 1, it's been about a month since my last post, and to say a lot has happened would be an understatement. First, I want to thank everyone for their support and advice. Your words have been a lifeline during this turbulent time, reminding me that I'm not alone in this struggle. After my initial post, I met with a divorce lawyer recommended by Sabrina. Her name is Evelyn, and she's been practicing family law for over 20 years. From the moment I walked into her office, I felt a sense of relief. Evelyn listened to my story without judgment, her experienced eyes taking in every detail. She helped me understand my rights and options, breaking down the complex legal jargon into terms I could understand. We started the divorce proceedings, and while it felt surreal signing those papers, I also felt a weight lifting off my shoulders. Evelyn assured me that given the circumstances, we had a strong case. She advised me to gather all financial documents and any evidence of Jasper's affair and erratic behavior. I spent the next few days combing through emails, text messages, and bank statements, feeling like a detective in my own life. About a week after meeting with Evelyn, I received a surprise message from Melody. My heart raced as I read her words asking if we could meet in person to talk. I was hesitant at first, the thought of facing the woman who had been with my husband made my stomach churn but curiosity and a need for closure won out, and I agreed to meet her at a local park. The day of the meeting, I arrived early, my nerves on edge. When I saw Melody approach, I was struck by how young and vulnerable she looked. Her eyes were red-rimmed, and she walked with a careful gait of someone in the early stages of pregnancy. We sat on a bench overlooking a small pond, the sound of ducks quacking filling the awkward silence between us. Suddenly, Melody burst into tears, apologizing profusely for her part in the affair. Between sobs, she explained that Jasper had pursued her relentlessly at work. He would bring her coffee every morning, offer to help with her projects, and always seemed to be there when she was having a tough day. Melody revealed that Jasper had told her our marriage was essentially over and that he was planning to leave me soon. As Melody spoke, I felt a mix of emotions, anger at Jasper's manipulation, sympathy for Melody's situation, and a deep sadness for the life I thought I had. Melody shared that Jasper had told her I knew about their relationship and was okay with it because I didn't want children. She was shocked when she received my email and realized the extent of Jasper's lies. But what Melody revealed next chilled me to the bone. Since I had exposed Jasper's plan, he had become increasingly controlling and aggressive towards her. He was pressuring her to get an abortion, saying it was the only way to save our marriage. Melody showed me text messages from Jasper, filled with manipulative language and veiled threats. She was terrified and didn't know what to do. Despite my complicated feelings towards Melody, I couldn't help but feel protective of her and her unborn child. I shared the contact information for a women's support group and offered to help her find resources if she needed them. 
As we parted ways, I felt a strange mix of emotions, anger at Jasper, sympathy for Melody, and a renewed determination to free myself from this toxic situation. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of activity. Jasper's behavior became even more erratic. He started showing up at my workplace, trying to corner me in the parking lot to explain things. I had to involve HR, who were surprisingly supportive and implemented extra security measures. Jasper also began appearing at Sabrina's apartment at odd hours, forcing us to call the police on two occasions. Through all of this, I've been focusing on taking care of myself. Sabrina suggested I see a counselor, and I've been having weekly sessions with Dr. Ramirez. She's been helping me process my emotions and develop coping strategies for dealing with the stress and anxiety. I've also thrown myself into my work, which has been a welcome distraction. My boss, understanding my situation, has been incredibly supportive, even offering me a chance to lead a new project. I've been spending more time with friends and family, rediscovering parts of myself that I had neglected during my marriage. I've started painting again, something I used to love but gave up when life got busy. The act of putting brush to canvas has been incredibly therapeutic, allowing me to express emotions I can't put into words. As for the divorce proceedings, they're moving forward, albeit slowly. Jasper is contesting the divorce, claiming that my interference in his relationship with Melody is grounds for a fault divorce. Evelyn assures me his claims are baseless, but it's still frustrating to deal with these delays. Melody and I have had a few more conversations. She's decided to keep the baby and is looking into her options as a single mother. While I can't forgive her for her part in the affair, I do hope she finds a way to create a stable life for herself and her child, far away from Jasper. As I write this update, I'm sitting in the spare room at Sabrina's apartment, surrounded by half-unpacked boxes of my belongings. It's not where I imagined I'd be at this point in my life, but I'm trying to see it as a fresh start rather than an ending. The road ahead is still long and uncertain but for the first time in months, I feel a glimmer of hope for the future. I'll post another update when there are significant developments in the divorce proceedings or if anything major happens with Jasper or Melody. Thank you all again for your support, it means more than you know. Update 2, it's been 3 months since my last update, and the situation has evolved in ways I never expected. I apologize for the delay in updating, but things have been incredibly hectic, and I've been trying to process everything that's happened. First, an update on the divorce proceedings. They're moving forward, albeit with some bumps along the way. Jasper initially tried to contest the divorce, claiming that I was at fault for interfering in his relationship with Melody. He even tried to argue that by informing Melody of his plans, I had breached his privacy and trust. Thankfully, Evelyn, my lawyer, shut that down quickly. She pointed out that Jasper's infidelity and subsequent behavior were more than enough grounds for an at-fault divorce in our state. We're now in the process of negotiating the division of assets, which has been contentious, to say the least. Jasper is trying to claim a larger share of our joint savings, arguing that his higher salary contributed more to our wealth. Evelyn is fighting hard for me pointing out that my support of Jasper's career, including moving cities for his job promotion three years ago, directly contributed to his higher earnings. Now, for the more surprising developments. About a month ago, I received a call from Melody. Her voice was shaky, and she asked if we could meet urgently. Concerned, I agreed to meet her at a local coffee shop the next day. When Melody arrived, I was shocked by her appearance. She looked terrible, her hair was unwashed, there were dark circles under her eyes, and she seemed to have lost weight, which was concerning given her pregnancy. As soon as she sat down, she burst into tears. Between sobs, Melody revealed that Jasper had been harassing her constantly since our last meeting. She showed me her phone, which was filled with messages from Jasper. They ranged from desperate pleas for her to get back together with him, to angry rants blaming her for ruining his life, to chilling threats about her job and her safety if she didn't cooperate. One message particularly stood out. Jasper had written, If you don't get rid of that baby, I'll make sure you regret it for the rest of your life. You'll never feel safe again. The timestamp showed it was sent at 2 a.m. just a few days ago. Melody was terrified. She said Jasper had shown up at her workplace several times, causing scenes that had put her job at risk. He'd also been seen lurking around her apartment complex, leading her to stay with a friend out of fear for her safety. As I listened to Melody, I felt a mixture of horror, anger, and guilt. Despite my complicated feelings towards her, I knew I had to help. No one deserved to live in fear like this, especially not someone who was pregnant and vulnerable. I encouraged Melody to file a police report and seek a restraining order against Jasper. When she hesitated, scared of potential repercussions, I offered to go with her to the police station for moral support. She agreed, relief evident in her eyes. The next day, we went to the police station together. It was a surreal experience, 
standing beside the woman my husband had an affair with, united in our fear of the man I once loved. The officer who took our statement, a kind-faced woman named Officer Chen, listened attentively and took detailed notes. She seemed particularly concerned about the threatening messages and Jasper's stalking behavior. Based on the evidence Melody provided, the police issued a temporary restraining order against Jasper, pending a court hearing. Officer Chenna also suggested that Melody consider pressing harassment charges, given the nature and frequency of Jasper's messages. When Jasper found out about the restraining order, he completely lost it. He showed up at my workplace, causing a scene in the lobby. He was yelling about how I had turned everyone against him and ruined his life. Security had to escort him out, and my boss suggested I work from home for a few days until things calmed down. My company has been incredibly supportive throughout this ordeal. They've offered counseling services and have been flexible with my work arrangements. They even hired additional security for the office, just in case Jasper tries to come back. In a twisted way, Jasper's erratic behavior has actually made the divorce proceedings easier for me. His actions have clearly demonstrated his instability, and Evelyn is confident this will work in my favor when it comes to the final settlement. She's documenting every incident, building a strong case for why I should be awarded a larger share of our assets. As for Melody, we've developed an unexpected alliance. While I can't say we're friends, we're supporting each other through this difficult time. She's now five months pregnant and has decided to keep the baby. She's also looking into legal options to ensure Jasper can't have any custody or contact with the child once it's born. I've been focusing on healing and moving forward. The painting I started as a form of therapy has become a real passion. I've even sold a few pieces at a local art fair, which has been a huge boost to my confidence. I've also joined a support group for people going through divorces, and it's been helpful to connect with others who understand what I'm going through. The road ahead is still long, but I'm starting to feel hopeful about the future. I'll post another update when the divorce is finalized or if there are any major developments with Jasper or Melody. Update 3 It's been six months since my last update, and I'm cautiously optimistic to report that there's finally some closure to this whole ordeal. First, the big news, the divorce has been finalized. Despite Jasper's attempts to drag out the process, the judge ruled largely in my favor. His erratic behavior and the evidence of his affair worked against him. I was awarded our shared apartment and a fair portion of our joint assets. It's not about the money for me, it's about closing this chapter of my life and having the resources to start anew. As for Jasper, he's facing some serious consequences for his actions. The restraining order Melody and I filed against him became permanent after he violated it multiple times. He's also been charged with harassment and is awaiting trial. His company found out about his behavior and fired him, citing violation of their code of conduct. Melody gave birth to a healthy baby boy two months ago. She's decided to raise him on her own and has moved to another state to be closer to her family. We still keep in touch occasionally, and she seems to be doing well, all things considered. She's pursuing legal action to terminate Jasper's parental rights, given his history of threats and harassment. As for me, I'm in a much better place now. The divorce and everything that came with it was undoubtedly the most challenging experience of my life, but I've come out stronger. I've maintained my focus on self-care and personal growth. I've been promoted at work, taking on more responsibilities in our digital marketing strategies. I've also started dating again, nothing serious yet, but it feels good to know that I'm ready to open myself up to new possibilities. I met a nice guy named Alex at my painting class, and we've been on a few casual dates. It's refreshing to spend time with someone who respects me and shows genuine interest in my thoughts and feelings. My relationship with my family and friends has grown stronger through this experience. They've been my support system, and I'm incredibly grateful for their love and understanding. Sabrina, in particular, has been a rock throughout this entire ordeal. I don't know how I would have made it through without her. Looking back, I'm glad I made the decision to tell Melody about Jasper's plan. While it led to a tumultuous few months, it ultimately saved both of us from further manipulation and potential danger. It wasn't an easy choice, but I believe it was the right one. This whole experience has taught me a lot about resilience, self-worth, and the importance of standing up for what's right, even when it's difficult. I'm looking forward to this new chapter in my life, free from the toxicity and deceit that defined the last year. Thank you all for your support throughout this journey. Your advice and kind words helped me more than you know. While I hope never to have to post in this subreddit again, I'm grateful for the community I found here during one of the most challenging times of my life.